What if I told you that every single Pixar movie is connected? Since Toy Story came out on November 22nd, 1995, Pixar has released over 17 animated movies, all with seemingly straightforward plots. But a number of theories have begun popping up about these films, each diving deeper into the true meanings of the film. There's even one earth-shattering, unifying theory that claims that every movie is connected. Get ready to look at some of your favorite movies very differently, because here are 10 Pixar movie theories that will blow your mind. Mind. Number one is Boo from Monsters Inc. becomes the witch from Brave. Our first theory involves a crossover between two seemingly different films that you wouldn't expect to be connected, mostly because they take place in completely different places and points in history with completely different characters. Or are they? There's a theory that says that Boo, the little girl from Monsters, Inc., discovers how to travel through time and space via the special doors used by the monsters. She then uses them in the future to see the world. When Boo is older, she travels through these doors trying to reconnect with Sully, the monster that she befriended. In her search, she travels back in time and discovers the Will-O-Wisps from the movie Brave. She studies the Wisps intently over time and takes up wood carving as a hobby. Now if this sounds far-fetched to you, the witch in Brave has wood carvings of a pizza truck and even of Sully himself. She also seems to disappear through doorways hinting at the connection between the two movies. Number two is The Incredibles develop their powers based on personality. The Incredibles is a movie about humans with superpowers, fighting the forces of evil while trying to keep their identities and their family intact. The thing is, no explanation is ever given as to how these powers develop in each individual. Well, there's one theory that says that these powers originate through their own individual personalities. For example, Bob, the father, has super strength since he needs to stay strong for his family through hard times. Ellen, the mother, can stretch her body at will and is extremely flexible as she has to take care of three kids. Violet is a shy teenage girl who can turn invisible, and Dash is a young hyperactive boy with super speed. But the biggest clue or piece of evidence supporting this theory comes from Jack-Jack, the little baby of the family. See, Jack-Jack has not yet developed his personality, which is why he possesses such a large and uncontrollable range of superpowers like teleportation, transformation, and laser beam eyes. Number three is Riley from Inside Out is adopted. Most of the Pixar films promote wholesome family togetherness and structure, and 2015's Inside Out is no exception, except that the family may not actually be related. In the movie, the main character Riley Anderson is introduced to us as a newborn baby, but certain pieces of evidence suggest that she may have actually been adopted by her parents right after her birth. For instance, both her parents possess brown hair and brown eyes, while Riley has blonde hair and blue eyes. The genetics in involved in something like that are very likely to produce a child with those traits. In real life, there would only be about a 6% chance of her receiving those traits from her supposed parents. Later in the film, 11-year-old Riley's mind shows us that she may already know that she's adopted, since a depiction of her family tree shows her alone at the top of it. This reveals that she's the first one on her family tree, in other words, the beginning of her own biologically connected family. Number four is Carl Dye before his adventure in Up. Okay, this especially sad theory takes what is quite possibly the most heartbreaking Pixar film and makes it even more sad. The idea behind the theory states that Carl, the lead old-timer character in the movie Up, doesn't really go off on his house-flying adventure at all. Instead, he actually passes away comfortably in his sleep the night before he's to be removed from his house and sent to Shady Oaks Retirement Home. The rest of the movie, from takeoff to landing, plays out his journey to the afterlife with Russell, the young Boy Scout, acting as his guardian angel. Russell's child form represents Carl and his deceased wife Ella's desire to have a child of their own. It goes even farther to say that the floating balloon operated house indicates his spirit's ascension from Earth and the magical land of Paradise Falls serves as heaven itself. And the house that he refuses to leave further symbolizes Carl's attachment to the physical world, which isn't necessary in the end as he finally finds heaven. Number five is Randy from Monsters, Inc. scares Andy from Toy Story. 
In 2001's box office smash Monsters Inc., there's a monster who scares new children, but if you look a bit closer, he may actually be a familiar face. That monster's name is Randy, and he has the ability to crawl up and down walls and completely camouflage his body against any surface, kind of like a chameleon. Well, there's one theory that suggests that one of the kids that this creepy monster scares at night is actually Andy, the boy from Toy Story. This is because in a promo video for Monsters University, Andy's closet door can be seen in a shot of the door manufacturing facilities. But even before that, in Monsters Inc., Randy warms up by quickly camouflaging against various backgrounds, one of them being the cloud wallpaper that lines Andy's bedroom. The final piece of evidence appears in Toy Story 3, where a Newt crossing sign is seen hanging on Andy's closet door, which makes sense since Randy kind of looks similar to a giant Newt. Number six is Nemo is imaginary. Oh, you thought Finding Nemo pulled on your heartstrings before? Yeah, well, it gets sadder. There's a dark fan theory that says that Nemo did not actually survive the Barracuda attack at the beginning of the movie, and that Marlin, Nemo's father, is only imagining him in his mind, a hallucination in order to cope with the loss of his wife and child. Evidence for this can be found right in the young clownfish's name, as Nemo in Latin literally means no one. The theory goes on to claim that Marlin experiences the five stages of grief throughout the duration of the film starting with him finding the sole surviving egg, Nemo, in his denial stage. As the story progresses, Marlin becomes overprotective in the anger stage, allows his friends to help him in the bargaining stage, believes that Nemo has died in the despair stage, and finally finds acceptance and learns to let go when he's reunited with his son, or rather imaginary son, which is obviously a coping mechanism at the end of the film. Number seven is Wally is a rogue cannibal. In the 2008 film Wally, Earth becomes greatly overpopulated and is overwhelmed with trash and waste. To save themselves, humans abandon the planet, flying off into space and leaving trash compacting robots like Wally behind to clean up the colossal mess. Well, if that potential future isn't dark enough for you, this theory just might be. It's been suggested that Wally may actually have murdered all all of the other robots with the same cleaning task as his. The motivation for this destruction is revenge when they destroyed precious trinkets that he wanted to keep. For evidence, simply look at the start of the film, when he's seen pillaging parts of his deactivated comrades with no remorse for their loss, while using the same parts to repair himself. The Earth becomes toxic after 700 years due to inefficiency of the cleanup, mostly because Wally is the single remaining unit assigned to Earth after after killing and hoarding parts of other robots. Number eight is Edna orchestrated Syndrome's death in The Incredibles. Going back to the 2004 film The Incredibles, a character named Edna Mode acts as a superhero advisor and costume specialist, designing the clothing for superheroes and supporting the super family. However, there's evidence that suggests that she may actually be the hero of this movie by single-handedly and covertly defeating the main villain Syndrome. In the past, Edna's suit design was responsible for the death of a teenage superhero, which became the catalyst for humans banning the use of superpowers. The death was classified as a suit malfunction due to her cape getting caught in a plane's turbine. During the film, Edna gives an incredibly detailed explanation of Syndrome's suit, details that only the designer should possess, meaning that she may have been commissioned by him to create it. Believing that Syndrome may have had bad intentions, Edna sabotages the suit's design by including a cape. As a result, Syndrome meets his demise when his cape gets sucked into a turbine. Whew, these ones are getting deeper and deeper. So let us continue. Number nine is Emily becomes Andy's mom in Toy Story 2. In Toy Story 2, the cowgirl Jessie tells Woody that she too once had a another owner, a young girl named Emily. As Emily got older and matured, she became interested in things other than playing with toys. So Jessie was left under the bed and ended up in a donation box on a hill. In the first Toy Story, Andy plays with his vintage cowboy toy named Woody, who belongs to the same toy set as Jessie and is seen wearing a replica of Jessie's hat, which is 
nearly identical to the one worn by Emily. Toy Story is then set in the 90s, so the then Emily would have been in her 30s. And judging from her 60s era decor in the flashback, she would have been at a very similar age to Andy's mom based on her appearance in the film, which leaves theorists to believe that they are, in fact, the same person. And number 10 is the Pixar Universe Theory. This is the ultimate theory, the mind bender, that is going to make you look at all future Pixar movies very differently. One that connects all of the Pixar movies into one universe. The Pixar universe theory starts with the magical Will-O-The-Wisps in the movie Brave affecting animals and giving inanimate objects life. This magic also leads to the advancement of technology like artificial intelligence and zero point energy like in The Incredibles and was incorporated into objects like the toys in Toy Story or land and air vehicles like in cars and planes making them sentient. The theory charts the growth of a company named B&L which takes over the world and eventually evacuates humanity from Earth due to pollution leaving the sentient machines, cars and robots behind to take care of the planet. Humans eventually return to Earth during Wall-E and a bug's life but mutate into monsters due to the radiation. The monsters travel back in time through magical doors to collect power from humans in Monsters Incorporated. And there it is! It's a small Pixar world after all. So, those were 10 Pixar movie theories to blow your mind. So I want to know, what do you guys think of these theories? Do they hold merit or are they just a little too far out there? Leave your response in the comments because I'll be reading through them and I'm going to pin the best comment to the top. But as always, thank you guys so much for coming by today. Remember to come back tomorrow and every weekday at 3pm Eastern Standard Time because I'll have a a brand new video for you. I'll see you then.